Hi, my name is Wei Hao Li, and I am a graduate student at Rice University, working with Professor Vicky Yao. Today, I am glad to be here to share my recent research, the pancancer characterization of microbiome signatures. In Li's study, we not only identify cancer-associated microbiota, but also systematically analyze those microbiome information into few key uh, microbial signatures, which are associated with the cancer types. So what is the cancer-associated microbiota? Actually, they are pretty similar to the definition of uh, microbiome, but however, the different thing is that uh, their microenvironments are much, much different than the normal condition because uh, tumor microenvironments has more immune cell and extracellular matrix, blood vessel, and also the environment is much more uh, acidic. And immune cell also will attack not only the cancer cells, but also the microbial community. And also, there are some uh, more interesting thing is that the cancer cell, they, uh, use different uptake, different uh, energy resources, and they also secrete different metabolites. So you can imagine that the microenvironment become um, much more different than before. And in there are several researchers uh, have reported that the, those cancer associated microbes actually have some interplays with the cancer cells. So here, the first paper, they find out there is a microbes, they have ability to digest the chemotherapeutic drug, just in into an inactive form. You can imagine that uh, when patients uh, intake the chemotherapeutic drug from their mouth and to their stomach, and at the end to our guts, there are thousands of microbes and maybe there are one or two microbes have ability to do that to make the drug into an inactive form. And the other paper uh, is studied a very famous cancer associated species, Fusobacterium nucleatum. So this paper, they try to find out the mechanism, how they interact with the cancer cells. So pretty, pretty interesting that they found out that Fusel nucleatin uh, bacteria nucleatin will interact with the cell's receptor on the membrane and trigger a series of molecular pathways. At the end, it inhibits the apoptosis, which leads the cancer cell have the chemo resistance or drug the resistance. So these two examples actually tell you that we must to find out those cancer associated microbes because they might digest your drugs or uh, make your uh, cancer cells more powerful. So to identify those uh, cancer associated at the microbiome become a very important task for, uh, ther for therapy. And in 2020, uh, the professor Rob Knight, a very famous um, microbiologist or bioinformatician, they published this amazing paper. So uh, there are not too much uh, open database for the cancer-associated microbiome. So they download the RNA sequencing data and whole genome sequencing data from the cancer genome outlets. Um, so those data sets actually uh, collect from 32 different cancer types and those samples were directly collected from the tumor. Although the original uh, design for this study is not for the cancer microbiome study, but they are still very precious uh, data set to use it. And they get this information, then an analysis the microbiome composition in those cancer types and train series of models to do the uh, cancer type prediction. And they successfully use those microbiome to do the prediction. However, in this study, we not only want to find out the, those microorganisms, but we want to establish a uh, pancancer 
or cancer-specific microbial signatures. Moreover, we want to use those signatures for more biologic, uh, biological study, like survival or chest their uh, tissue or region. So uh, our workflow can be uh, break down into several parts from the data preprocessing. We download the data from the Cancer Genome Atlas. And here we use the latest uh, version, um, which mapped to the version 38 human reference genome. And here we only care about the primary solid tumor. And we get rid of the human reads and reuse the unmapped reads. And we use the Kraken 2 for metagenomic classification. Here we still import the human reference genome because we try our best to remove the contaminants from the human reads. Then we can get those microbial abundance information. Then we did a serious uh, data preprocessing, including normalization, decontamination, feature selection, and we apply a newly devised transformation method called observed frequency. So what is observed frequency? So actually the observed frequency is divide, uh, device to address a scenario. You can imagine there is a microbes uh, which has very low abundance, but it is pretty important for uh, this uh, tumor or uh, cancer type, such as the HPV in cervical cancer. They are not the dominant species. They are very low amounts. But if we use some uh, traditional uh, algorithms, or uh, uh, machine learning tools, actually we are rarely can identify those important uh, creatures from our data sets. So now use our uh, method, observed frequency. So observed frequency can be written in the right-hand side of this formula. There are two terms. The first term actually is our relative abundance. I believe uh, everyone knows the relative abundance, but we also consider ratio across samples. So due to, actually due to this term, we can amplify this low abundance information to relatively higher signal than before. And that is why we can identify those low abundance uh, species in our following results. So after we gather in those observed frequency metrics or microbial observed frequency information, then we can do a serious analysis. So let's go to the first part, characterization of microbial signatures. So to establish a series of micro, uh, microbial signature, actually what we did is to do the dimension reduction. So here we use the semi-supervised non-native metric Vectorization. So this method actually is based on the MMF and it also pulls the algorithms to learn the samples, their um, cancer types information. So what is the MMF? MMF stands for the non-negative metric vectorization. It helps users to decompose the input metrics into two metrics multiplications, the W and the H. And so in our data set, our input metrics, each row represents a microbes and each column is a sample. So we call the W matrix, the microbial composition and H matrix is the prevalence matrix. So actually the MRF has a very good characteristic. It enforces the X, W, H, the stream, matrices, the elements are all non-active. So using MF actually uh, can help us to identify the lantern variables. In this case, we call the signatures and we have better interpretability uh, compared to the SBD and PCA, which are other method for uh, data um, dimension reduction. However, I think because there are some negative values, it is hard to interpret those values. And also it can help us to do the noise canceling 
data compression, and it has been widely used for a while for the mutation of the signatures. So that's the reason why we use the MMF. However, uh, in this study, we applied the MMF extension called semi-supervised MMF. So the semi-supervised MMF, uh, because we provide them the samples, their labels information, like cancers or sex. So we can force the MMF algorithms, not only decompose the input metrics, but also try to learn the sample stables information. To so doing that, we actually enforce that these, uh, the left-hand side, these, uh, and, uh, this part, use the edge metrics to be a link, uh, anchor to link between the MIF and the semi-supervised part. So our, let's look at the objective function. So we not only uh, recon uh, want to reconstruct the input metrics, as you can see the standard MMF, and we also try to learn some sample labels information in our case is our cancer types. And here in front of this semi-supervised terms uh, has a lambda. Actually, uh, the lambda is our weight or we can call it penalty. So if we have a higher lambda means that we force these algorithms to learn more about the sample stables. And uh, the other hyperparameters need to be tuned is the number of signatures. And I think that is the most difficult part. So in this research, we adopt the cross-validation methods. So this method um, is pretty easy to understand. Uh, we select 30% of data points from the original input data and split into chain set and holdout set. And we only use chain set to do the SSMMF and we can get the WNH matrix and we reconstruct the WNH matrix. And so we call it reconstructing input matrix. So we hope our algorithms can uh, we hope our algorithms can um, identify important signatures and we can reconstruct the input matrix. And we, now we only compare the original holdout set and the, uh, the data points in the holdout set from the reconstructed input matrix. And we try to minimize the mean square error between these two metrics. And if we can, uh, so when the best number of signatures, we will observe the minimum mean square error. So here is the results. And let's swing into the final choice, uh, how, our final choice. So when lambda equals 10 to 10, and as you can see here are two lines, the green line stand for the holdout set mean square error. And you can see our elbow shape here. So at the end, we choose the number of signatures equals to 55, and uh, which uh, this line reached the minimum uh, uh, mean square error. And start from this point, actually the algorithm start learning some noise pattern. And that is why uh, the chain set mean square error st still decrease, but however, the whole offset mean square error start to increase. So after uh, we choose in the number of signatures, then we can start to uh, study their um, prevalence metrics. So we summarize the prevalence metrics by their cancer types. So we group those samples by their cancer types, as you can see in these heat maps. The blue stands for the male, the red stands for the female, and the uh, radius of the circle represents the ratio of samples has uh, these signatures. And here I want to show you some interesting signature, uh, such as the 31 uh, is highly associated with the rectum. The uh, 26 is our colorectal can uh, colon cancers. And 13 is the our cer cervical cancer. And the two signature two is our liver cancer. So later we will dive into these four signatures for more interesting discover. 
And here I want to point out uh, that, as you can see, the colon cancer and rectum cancer actually share very similar signatures, uh, microbial signatures. So that is why they cluster together. And that is, we have already known the microbial composition in the colon and rectum are pretty similar. And moreover, the kidney cancer also has very, have very uh, similar signatures in these two uh, uh, kidney cancers. And, uh, and the, the third group, the ovarian and uterian and uh, cervical cancer are grouped together because they share very, very similar uh, microbial signatures. So, yeah, so these uh, signature prevalence, PMAN not only show us some cancer specific signature, but also tell us the potential how the signatures can not only uh, capture the cancer type specific information, but also uh, we can use them to compare with other cancer types. And we can move on to the next uh, analysis, the analysis, the microbial composition. And here, uh, what we're showing is the, uh, the signature we have already selected from the previous uh, heat maps. The signature 13, the top one uh, creature is our HPV virus. And that is a pretty amazing, amazing. we can capture those uh, low abundance viruses from in our signatures. And also in signature two as from our liver cancer. So um, the first top one is the HIPAA DNA virus, which also we have already know that they are highly associated with the liver cancer. And these two signatures actually only can be identified when using uh, observed frequencies. And if we use the relative abundance, actually we cannot observe these kind of um, species in our signatures. And the micros in signature 26 and 31, uh, they are uh, pretty frequently seen uh, microbes in the gut micro. And furthermore, we use our signatures to do some tissue or region prediction. So we collect the data sets from the human micro project two. And there are nine uh, tissue types as uh, our reference. And we try to use our signatures to predict their origin, tissue origin. And as you can see, the signature 26 and 31 are colon and rectum cancer. And you can see the darkest uh, color are near the rectum and the colon cancers. So um, these uh, proof our signature not only can uh, summarize those microbial information, but also we still can trace back their tissue origin using the signatures. And, and, the, and the last uh, analysis, we did a series of the survival analyses. Here I only show an example uh, of the signature 16. Uh, which is uh, enriched in the liver cancer. And as you can see, I think this signature is more in protective way that the higher, uh, the patient with the higher uh, prevalence or a higher, more signature, uh, this signature has better survival than the lower prevalent group. So I think our signatures not only could have uh, can be used for identifying their cancer, but also we can use it for several biological studies. To summary my research, I think we devised a new transformation method and to solving the low abundance problems. And we identify a, a lot of cancer associated microbes. And we use the semi-supervised MMF to identify or characterization of cancer-associated microbiosignatures.
and we use a more systematic way to analyze those micro their composition across different tissues. And we also shown our uh, potential that our signatures can be used for more advanced biological application. And here I want to thank for our uh, lab uh, members, yeah, including my advisor Vikia and also our labs uh, data scientist Ruth, and also my lab mates uh, Le Chuan Chiang and Sami. And I, if you are enjoying uh, this presentation or this research, please check our lab's website. Uh, I hope I can soon we publish this draft on, uh, on our websites. And thank you for your listening. And uh, I would like to take any questions 